Okay, y'all, that's right. As you know, I have to rush over, coming over from, of course, have a nice day on LL Cool J's Rock the Bells Radio. So as I do that, then I run over here, you know, um, shit is serious out there right now. You got to wear these masks all the time. Uh, this is my official have a nice day mask. Let me try to tilt to this light, see if y'all can see it. Uh, can you see it? Yeah, I guess you can see the little smiley faces because you want to make sure that people have a nice day. So welcome to Have a Nice Podcast with Roxanne and Sharon Tay, where what I do is I tell you, mm -hmm, that's right, I tell you a little hip hop story, baby. So let me just tell you, on my way coming here to the studio, I was thinking, where are we going to go this week? Now, last week we was at the Roxy's. We was at the Roxy's and we was talking about the fact that my earrings had got snatched. But this week, okay, baby, this week I am totally, totally influenced. Should I say influenced? Yeah, I guess you could say influenced. Uh, yeah, my muse was my way here. Okay, my muse was my way here. And guess where I walked past? Times Square. That's right. The ultimate 42nd Street. For those of you who know like I know and know like I knew what I know, baby, we're talking about the motherfucking deuce itself. So listen, as we start to talk about the deuce and I give you a little bit about, you know, let me take you on a deuce, on the deuce with Roxanne Shante for one night. All right, let me give you this number, 279-732-0011. Let me say that again, 279-732-0011. If you got a story about the deuce, if you've ever been to 42nd Street, you've ever been to New York, you've ever been to the famous Times Square, baby, and you got something that you want to share, feel free to call us up and let us know. 279-732-0011. Okay, here we go. You know when you come to Times Square, automatically there are so many different uh, trains you can catch here. So you can catch the two, the three, the four, the five, the seven, you can catch the N, the R, you can also catch the E, the F, the D, you know what I'm saying? So wherever you're coming from, the four to five, um, you can catch whatever it is that you need to catch in order to get here. So now let's go to, let me pick a good year, 1984. So we're going back to the deuce, 1984. This is before Disney came, before they were restaurants. I'm talking about the deuce when it was uh, movie theaters, uh, peep shows. Shout out to all the motherfuckers that was going to the peep shows. I never even knew people could carry that many motherfucking quarters. But I knew that if you had on a raincoat and you had a whole bunch of change, you was about to go in the theater and do some strange things. Please believe it, baby. But what we're going to talk about is the movies. Did you ever go to a movie theater on 42nd Street? Had you ever been to a movie on the deuce? Now, the difference between how I was able to do this last week and do this this week is because one, I want to give a shout out to everybody that's in the rooms, everybody that is watching right now. Tell a friend to tell a friend that Roxanne Shante is up here again. So if we're going to start off at the deuce, first thing we're going to do is we're going to think about the music. Hmm, What song would it be? Set it off. Y'all remember motherfucking set it off. That was like, set it off on the left, y'all. Set it off on the right, y'all. Set it off. You only set it off. Whoo! On the left. Uh oh, I was getting too much into it, but on the right. <laughs> y'all know where we was at. So anyway, you finally made it. Your long train ride to 42nd Street to the Duke. First thing you want to do was take a picture. Now, as you're walking down the deuce, you'll notice that there are a lot of places that were abandoned. Some things were closing down. Most of the movie theaters, baby, was cruddy, cruddy, cruddy. Okay? I'm talking sticky seats, sticky floors. If your feet never stuck to the bottom of the motherfucking floor in a movie theater, then you wasn't in a good movie theater. Sometimes the popcorn be a little gummy because it's a little old. That's why you got to tell them, make some fresh popcorn. But now we're on the deuce. We're taking pictures. You're doing your favorite deuce pose. You like this. Bam. You like that. Bam. B-girl stance. Everybody put their hand up, taking their pictures like this. You know, sitting in that big straw chair. 
picking up that phone with that coil cord, taking that picture like it's Easter, Christmas, New Year's, and for some people, every weekend. So now you are traveling down with Roxanne Shante. Please believe it, baby. So as we're walking down the deuce, let me think of what the greatest deuce outfit would be. The greatest outfit to wear on the deuce would be the denim suit. Yeah. So we're talking a nice denim suit. We're talking permanent creases down the front, shell toe motherfucking Adidas, maybe even a fresh pair of Pumas. And you're going to see a movie. One of the movies that I remember going to see on 42nd Street, myself and Biz Marquis. And I guess I never really wanted to go into a Biz memory because I thought it was going to make me sad. But this one here is actually the beginning of Roxanne Shante and Biz Marquis. And I've never told this story before. And that's the reason why this is such a gift from Rock the Bells to you, because I get a chance to share stories with you that I never really told anybody about or never felt the need to share them. So here it is, 1984, um, I just started doing shows, really, you know, there was a lot going on as far as the money was concerned, you know, people were still doing a lot of stealing, okay, let's just put it lightly, a lot of stealing, but anyway, it's 1984, I'm just coming into this thing called hip hop, and um, Biz needed some place to stay, and it was crazy because so many people he would do so much for and he didn't have a place to stay this night because we had to show the next day so I told him I said listen I'm gonna sneak you in my house and when I sneak you in my house you got to be really quiet because I'm already like barely able to to stay there but I know that we have a show tomorrow and you are my hip hop brother. So Biz, come stay in the house, you know, come spend the night. We'll leave early in the morning. My mom will never know. Well, let me just tell you something. It's hard as fuck to hide Biz Marquis in a two bedroom project apartment from your mother. Okay. The living room is not big enough. The bedrooms are not big enough. It's just like the apartment was just not big enough to try to hide a Biz Marquis. But we tried. We put him on the couch, covered him with a blanket. Baby, when Biz started snoring, it sounded like he was motherfucking beatboxing. My mother jumped up, came running in the living room. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? And he rose up like he was rising from the dead. And he took that cover down and he was like, hey, Miss Peggy. And she was like, hey, my motherfucking ass, what are you doing here? And automatically I come running out the bedroom. My, we got a show. My mother is so stern and she was so strict. She was like, I don't give a fuck what y'all got. Y'all got to go. Okay, you know my rules. I was like, but it's biz. She was like, I don't give a fuck who it is. I said, come on, biz. So it's about four o'clock in the morning. Now, some people may think it's harsh for somebody's moms to do that. But the thing is, when you are raising girls, there's a certain way that you got to be. Your rules got to be strict. I love my mom. Have a wonderful relationship with her. But I understand now how she was there. Four o'clock in the morning. Plus, I'm Roxanne Shante. This, I'm a little different. I'm not your average 14-year-old girl. Biz says, sorry, Shani. I didn't mean to get you put out. I told him, like, shit, I was probably going to get put out anyway. You know what I'm saying? It's probably just going to be a few days anyway. I was probably going to get put out. Don't worry about it. It's not your fault, Biz. He said, all right, Shani. Where are we going to go? I said, 42nd Street. We're going to go to the Deuce. Movies are open 24 hours a day. We, the movies never close. We can go there, sit up in the movie theater for a little while. Then after the movie is over and it gets close to the time for us to catch our flight, we'll just jump on the train head back to Queens and go to the airport. Now, this is why I don't understand when people say, oh, it shouldn't be a struggle with things or it shouldn't be this. Everyone I know that has became great 
baby, it has always been a struggle first. So we get on the train. One thing about biz, biz being so much bigger than me when we were younger, it allowed me to lean on him like a pillow. Like you felt so safe leaning on biz. You just did. So I linked on him. We caught the train, got to the deuce. We got to the movie theater. When we got to the movie theater, we look up, karate flicks. Yeah. Nothing makes you feel better than a good motherfucking karate flick. Shout out to everybody that has their favorite karate flicks. Like you can have um, my favorite, Five Deadly Venoms. Hands down. Best one out. If I had to pick a fucking venom, guess what? Roxanne Chante is a motherfucking toad. And I'm not telling nobody how to get to me in order to puncture my skin and go through all of that. So, like I said, my five deadly venoms. So we go to the movie theater and we're sitting in the movie theater. And it was so strange because Biz decided that out of nowhere, he was like, you know what? If this ever happens to us, because that's how we are. We are those type of friends. We are those type of students. We are that type of group. This is what we're going to do. Ain't nothing. This is that type of group. Hold on, I think we got a phone call. Hello? 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 Shane, how you doing? Can you hear Hey, I can hear you. Hello? Okay, how you doing? It's Bernard Possible, baby. How you doing? I, I just wanted good. to ask you a quick question. Go ahead, hit me. I, I can hear you. Hello? Yeah, hit me with the question. Oh, now, this place you talk about four dudes, because I've only been to New York one time in my whole life, Shani. I ain't going to hold you. But... This place, the deuce you talking about, is that the same place, uh, uh, the show they got on HBO? They said Met the Man was in it or something? Because I never watched that neither, but is that the same place you talking exactly. about? Exactly. That is the same place. Okay. okay. I'm about to watch that then. Okay. Yeah, it's the same Thank exactly. you, Queen. I love your story. Thank Good you, back sweet. To you. No problem. Please believe it, baby. Okay. So, as you see... In between telling the story, every now and then, I'm going to have to take some phone calls. Remember, the number is 279-732-0011. Remember, tell a friend to tell a friend that Roxanne Shante is up here telling this whole story again, baby. Please believe it. So, we're there. And um, one of the things about it is that you look at karate flicks and you start to think to yourself, do we have that type of, hold on one second. Let me get this other phone call. Hold, hold on a second. Let me just grab this and then I'll get right back to the story. Okay. So like I said, 279-732-0011. Now, one of the things about this uh, karate flick story that I was trying to get to and tell y'all. So we get our tickets. I'm not going to stop no more. So we get our tickets. Once we get our tickets, we go inside the movie theater. If you have ever been inside of the movie theaters on 42nd Street, you know what I'm talking about. You know how it is when you first come in. It's a certain smell. It's a smell of, hmm. Have you ever smelled old popcorn? Have you ever smelled butter and feet? Well, that's what the theaters used to smell like back in the days. It smelled like old popcorn, butter, and feet. And you go over to the concession stand. Usually the same person who takes your tickets in the middle of the night is the same person who works behind the concession stand. So they would take your ticket, come in, go to the concession stand, and then right next to the concession stand would be the water fountain. Dun, dun, dun. Now, if you have ever drunk, drank, sipped, or slurped out of a 42nd Street movie theater's water fountain. You ain't got to worry about catching a motherfucking thing. Because whatever it is, you was going to catch you with a quarter right there from that water fountain. I don't know what was in it. That water was a little warm. Yes, I drunk out of the water fountain. Maybe that might be the fountain of youth. 
Maybe that might be why we are still able to do what we do so well is because we drunk out of the water fountain. So as Biz is getting us some snacks and I go over to the water fountain and I press the little pedal because back in the days, you know, it wasn't fancy like now. You had to press that pedal on the water fountain and you had to give it a motherfucking test. See, it was called the pedal test. The pedal test was you tap it to see how far the water was going to shoot out. So if you pressed it and the water was real low, you'd be sad because you really don't want to put your mouth on the motherfucking little fountain thing. But other than that, if it came out a little bit, you know how much pressure to put on the pedal. You drunk the water. And it tastes like metal. And inside your motherfucking mouth tastes like as if you had a whole bunch of pennies. You know when you was little and you put change in your mouth? And that taste of change in your mouth? Well, that's what the fuck it tastes like. And, um, but it was something about that water. Because one, it showed that either you couldn't afford a soda or you were daring enough to drink out of the water fountain. Me, Roxanne Shante, Biz, we all drunk out the motherfucking water fountain. Sometimes we go in the bathroom, run the water, put your fucking hand in, just drink out your hand, depending on how much salt. Biz used to put a lot of salt on the motherfucking popcorn. So that used to have me mad because, you know, your hands feel gritty and you feel very, very thirsty. So we go inside and we sit down and you check the seat because that's the key. You must check the seat before you sit down. So we would check the seat, you know, and you really don't want to check it with your hands because you didn't know what the fuck was on it. Yeah. So you check it and then sit down and you watch the movie. One thing about watching movies on 42nd Street on the deuce is commentating. You never got to watch the movie just to watch the movie. Unless you was like in the raincoat movie theaters. And that's the ones where it was like triple X theaters. Everybody wear their little trench coat. They little hand and wherever they hand go, whatever they do, what they do. That's a whole different type of movie. That was, was like, you go in there and stay, and those was like two for three dollars. But anyway, back to karate flicks. So now, you check the seat, you sit down in it, and you hear everybody talking about everything. Somebody lay a punch, punch that motherfucker. Somebody lay a kick, kick that motherfucker. Somebody get up, sit your ass down. Like, there was never any quiet in the movie theater. And I think that's the reason why it became such a safe haven for so many young people who were in the streets because you knew you weren't alone because you could walk down and see so many people almost like as if you'd say, wow, if we are the misfits, then this is our fucking meeting place. This is the misfits meeting place. And our whole goal in life was to be great. And me and Biz sat there and Biz told me, he was like, yo, you know what, Shani? One day, we're going to be stars. And I was like, yeah, maybe. He was like, no, I'm telling you, the world is going to know us. And when he said this, I was only 14 years old. And he was like, the world is going to know us. I was like, motherfucker, the world already know me. He said, stop playing, Shani. I'm talking about they're really going to know you. And when I think about it now, and I think about all of the countries we've been to and all of the shows that we've done, he didn't lie. He saw something that, you know, maybe that I didn't even see. Maybe still today, I really don't see it how everyone else sees it. So I said, you think we're gonna be stars, Biz? He said, yeah, we are. And then he said, you see that? We gonna have a movie. And I was like, okay, you're pushing it. It's one thing when you say that we're gonna be known, but a movie? And I say that to say, here it is, you know, 30 years later, of course, you know, I have the movie Roxanne Roxanne on Netflix and uh, one of the most rewatched movies. And still today, people stop me in the street and talk about it. I say that to say, never give up on your dreams. Never let anyone tell you what you can't do. Never feel that your bottom is, is unescapable or that you can't rise from where you are. Your bottom may just be your beginning. 
Stop feeling like it's always going to be something that's holding you down. Stop giving people the power to be in a position to do that. You can't do that. When people would tell me, oh, your voice? Uh, people not going to hear that. Motherfucker, they listen to it every day, about 7 million people. You know what I'm saying? When they started to say, well, you know what, Shantae? I just think that you don't seem to want to adapt or change. And I said, adapt and change to what? To who? To how? You know, I'm, I'm me. I don't want to be anybody else but me. And I want you to always be comfortable being you. Even doing this podcast. I'm going to be perfectly honest with y'all. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I don't. I show up five minutes before it's time to go on. I sit down. I come in. When I come in, I see, you know, the 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 team. I see, uh, you know, the the producers. They're already like, is she come? I slide in this motherfucker like Eddie King Jr. Well, I ain't got no money. <laughs> you got no fancy car. Oh, sorry. Back to the podcast. But you get what I'm saying. What I'm saying is. You got to take life and do it on your own terms. And whatever's going to be is going to be. So when Rock the Bell said, we want to give the listeners our LLs. Oh, somebody asked me to break down the LLs for you. Let me break that down for you right now. When I say LLs, when you're listening to Have a Nice Day on Rock the Bells, the main thing about it is those are our loyal listeners. Loyal listeners, that's what LLs stand for us. So we want to make sure that they know that we acknowledge them. They know that we love them. We know that um, every day they can tune in and find us. So automatically, because it's LLs radio, then automatically, I just wanted to let you know that you were our LLs. So that's the reason why I had to explain LLs, because somebody had asked me to explain it. So that's the reason why I'm going to explain that to you. But back to what I was talking about, to me and Biz and how we are you know, now known, rest in peace, Biz. I really, like I said, I never was really going to talk too much about my memories with Biz, but how could I not? We never, ever, ever, ever lost a battle. And you know that I'm, I was a battle rapper for a very long time. Never lost a battle, ever. I would show up at parties with Biz, and Biz would do the beatbox and amaze people. Truly a human orchestra. Sometimes when we would walk in, people would be mad because they knew I was going to tear that motherfucker up. You see what I'm saying? They knew that once we got on stage, baby, it was going to be a hard act to follow. And now, here it is. I'm doing this podcast and talking about biz and talking about memories of 42nd Street and being on the deuce and outfits and things you wore to the deuce. And it was like the deuce was your 24-hour party and whatever else you wanted to find. Whatever else you wanted to find on the deuce, you could find. For those of you who don't know what the deuce is, the deuce is Times Square, 42nd Street. Whatever you wanted to find, you could find. Shout out to the motherfuckers that survived the Carter. There used to be a really big... Um, Hotel around the corner called the Carter. Baby, shout out to everybody that survived the Carter. Shout out to the people who went to Bonds. Most people's parents went to Bonds. But coming down on 42nd Street and watching movies and being able to take pictures and have those pictures, for me, is some of the greatest, greatest, greatest memories from the 80s. Like, you just, you can't beat that. You cannot beat that. You know, holding your Polaroid pictures and shaking them. I don't even know if you're supposed to really fucking shake the pictures. You know, you're not? No. Yeah, I don't know why. Why they fucking used to tell us to shake the picture? Like, you, we would buy the picture and they'd be like, oh, just stand over there and shake it. And we'd be shaking that motherfucker and shaking it and shaking it. And now I'm talking to a professional photographer. She was like, yeah, I didn't have to shake the picture. But fuck it, we shook it. It was the 80s. Shake your fucking picture. You know what I'm saying? That's what we did. You, you know, and um, you would peel the picture off really slowly, peel the paper off of it, and then see what you had. And now, with everything being, and there's nothing wrong with taking pictures on your phones and everything being as fast as it is now, but the feeling of waiting for a motherfucking Polaroid 
can't we be? The feeling of seeing your outfit and 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 wanting to hold it and holding it from the sides because you wanted to make sure that you didn't put your fingerprints on it. Amazing. Can't be beat. So we've decided to start sharing some of my photos. So we got a whole big thing. I'm going to let the production do what the production does and make sure that we sit up and put up some pictures and things like that. But I have some more stories for you. And I hope that you enjoyed going with me to 42nd Street. This is Roxanne Shantae. Have a nice podcast. Please believe it, baby. <laughs>